pod with the cast, the bang, the bang, oh, diggy, diggy. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Literary AF Podcast. My name's Sheldon. I'm Danny. Uh, that intro uh, was carefully vetted from many other possible <laughs> songs that we could have parodied. Uh, you definitely didn't go, wait, wait, I got one, like, two seconds before turning on the microphone. No, I had, <laughs> I considered about ten options, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. believe it or not, that was the least bad of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, welcome to our podcast. Uh, we talk about books yep. and other reading things that you can read. <laughs> Mostly books. Mostly books. The occasional short story. Yeah. Uh, today, we're looking at a book called... I know what it's called, but I can't remember the author's name, and I want to say it all at once. All right, all The right. Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. Okay. Um, it was made into an old Disney movie, I believe. Okay. Um, it sounds familiar. Yeah, it does sound familiar, and uh, the one character who's kind of known from it is Mr. Toad. Right. Like, I believe Mr. Toad's Wild Ride was maybe a Disney ride. Oh, yes. Um, there's a channel I've watched on YouTube that does a lot of old Disney ride videos. Okay. I can't remember what they're called now. It might come to me later. I think I've seen, or I've seen a few channels like that that look Defunct at... Land. Yeah, Defunct yeah, Land. Defunct Land videos is so are good. really good. The videos are super good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I feel like we've randomly throughout our podcast, like, recommended just random YouTube Assorted channels. Assorted YouTube channels uh, that we watch, yeah. I've been watching one this weekend called Detail Geek, and he, uh, he details cars. Okay. And it's like, half an hour to 45 minutes of just watching this guy like deep clean a car right right and it's insanely relaxing huh. like <laughs> that's pretty cool yeah it's like you watch him like get into like the deep like crannies and stuff and yeah you're just, yeah like, how's he doing this i've been watching a lot of games done quick videos oh yeah they're like really good speed running and speed uh, running yeah like the actual um gdq playlists yeah. and stuff yeah they're just good to put on while you're doing your other things it's great uh yeah, but, uh, so anyway, <laughs> <Back> Mr. <books>. Toad. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Toad. Yeah, so I believe the Disney movie, um, only focuses on the Mr. Toad portion of the book. Okay. Because a lot of the book didn't feel familiar until a certain event happened involving Mr. Toad. Okay. Um, and even then, I, I don't know how faithful it was to the book. Right. Uh, the book, if you've ever read a Redwall book, yep. this feels like a more fun version of that okay like redwall takes themselves kind of seriously and it's all like it's very medieval fantasy and this is like there's animals sort of living alongside humans um they often refer to each other like by their animal names and like yeah they always do they don't very few of them have like real names right um there's some random fighting and it's also it's not medieval time like redwall is it's like uh turn of the century like 19th century kind of times okay like, yep they have pistols and stuff at one point <laughs> wait so how long is this book um i read it on an ebook right and it said it was 187 pages okay uh i don't so i'm guessing I wrote like that length but at the same time with ebooks it's really hard it's to tell. so hard to judge like something on an ebook for sure yeah uh i would say that it took me probably about um like maybe about five hours to okay. read. I okay. don't know if that's accurate or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, it's a uh, here. We'll get into it. It's uh, it's all fun. Right. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. So in our first chapter, we have we start with the mole. Okay. Uh, he is cleaning out his home, which is underground, uh, doing spring cleaning, and then he gets like sick of it or something, or he feels like this stirring. A lot of times, the animals will just be like driven forward by some like animal uh like intuition or like some uh instinct or whatever right and uh it's often described as like a stirring or like something close to a smell but not quite or like something like that okay uh, anyway so mole decides it's time to leave his hole um i think he wants to go on a vacation maybe and he so he stops spring cleaning he starts tunneling through the wall and then eventually he comes to the, the meadow he's like frolicking in the sun and then he sees on the river uh, there is a water rat who is riding in a boat. Um, the water rats, I don't know if they'd met before, but they like quickly become friends and the mole joins him in the boat. Um, rat is, a. Uh, he always like, he thinks he's very smart and he, he's not stupid. 
Toad right. thinks he's very smart and is stupid, which is awesome. Toad <laughs> is so good. Uh, but yeah, but so Rat's always like trying to like tell him what to do, and Mole's just like too excited. And Mole tries to row the boat for himself and tips the boat. Uh, the rat thinks it's funny though, and the rat can swim, so he like saves Mole and saves their stuff. Um, as they're going down the river, uh, Rat decides to take Mole to meet Mr. Toad. Mm-hmm. Mr. Toad is rich, and he has a Toad Hall, which is a <laughs> giant mansion on the water. Great. Um, Mr. Toad also likes frolicking about in boats and going on weird adventures. Um, Mr. Toad is awesome. <laughs> he is the best <laughs> character in the book. Right. We'll just start that off. All right. Uh, on the way to meet Toad, they run into Otter and Badger. Um, Otter is really good friends with... <laughs> Did I hear a laugh about Otter and Badger? Yeah. <laughs> um, Otter's really good friends with Rat, and they're talking about river stuff. Uh, Badger doesn't want to talk to them at first and leaves, and Mole's, like, kind of scared or, like, thinks that he's done something wrong, and they're like, oh, don't worry, Badger just hates society. Every time you say Badger, I just think of that video from like the early 2000s. Oh, the badger 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 badger, badger, badger. <laughs> that's all i can think of now now that you said it <laughs> um i thought you meant like like you know like otters and bears and stuff like the oh yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i know where that. you're going with that yeah <laughs> um, i was like oh is there a badger in there too i didn't know that <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> uh, anyway so after they talk to them um they head over to mr toad's house uh and Toad wants to go on a journey of some kind. Um, I believe they go to a human city. I'm not super clear. Uh, I kind of forget a lot of the early chapters in this book. <laughs> All right. Because really the star of this book is the second half. Right. Uh, so they go on this journey. Uh, I don't think anything really important happens other than Toad sees a motor car and becomes obsessed with cars. Okay. Uh, he, also, <laughs> he always describes their sounds as going poop poop. Which is kind of funny because you'll read in the book. Poop poop. Total just starts saying poop poop when he's talking about cars. Um, <laughs> uh, Toad is obsessed with cars, by the way. Oh, I think they all. A car almost runs over them and knocks their cart over. And then while Rat and Mole are like upset and like kind of scared and like, oh, great, now we have to pick everything up, Toad is just like, I want one of those. <laughs> um, they come back. Uh, then it kind of skips ahead to fall. Like that was spring. Right. Um, Skips head to fall and Mole. Oh, they start spending more and more time at Rat's home. Like Mole's basically just moved in with Rat at this point. Right. Um, Mole wants to go exploring the wild wood and he wants to meet Badger because everything he's heard about Badger sounds like Badger's a, like a pretty cool character. Right. Um, but he's very reclusive. So then Rat refuses to go. Rat just wants to sit at home and like eat and write poems and stuff. Right. Uh, so then Mole decides to sneak out on his own. He gets lost in the wild wood. It starts snowing. Um, there's like unsavory characters, which are weasels and stoats and ferrets. Right. Uh, laughing at him or staring at him through the woods and he's getting scared. Um, eventually Rat comes to find Mole and he finds Mole who's like crying and afraid. Um, Rat says, oh, you know, we'll get out of here. They start trying to escape, but it's snowing too hard. Um, Mole trips on something and cuts his leg, but then they find out the thing he tripped on was like a, I think it was like the entrance, like map or something to like an underground house. Right. And it's a, and it's Badger's house. They found the door to Badger's house. So they dig it out from snow and then they climb inside. Um, Badger was like, oh, what are you guys doing here? Uh, like, you know, stay inside. It's cold. Right. Uh, he lets them stay for the night. Him and Mole actually get along really well because they're both underground dwellers and they have underground sensibilities or something like that. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and so, you know, they're having a good time. It's also winter, so a lot of the animals hibernate and Badger's one of them. So he's like, even though he's entertaining guests, he's also like constantly falling asleep in his chair and stuff like that. Right. Uh, Otter comes the next day. Um, he talks to Rat for a bit. Mole and Badger talk for a bit. Uh, ba- Badger has like these tunnels. And it's like his house was like an abandoned human city from hundreds of years ago. And these are just the tunnels left over from like the sewer or whatever. I don't know if it's meant to be like a futuristic place where animals have taken over. Post-apocalyptic? Maybe. Or else it's just straight up like 
like ancient really ruins. an ancient ruin. Yeah. Um, that the animals have moved in, like moved into and taken over. Huh. Um. Interesting. Yeah, I think at first I was like, oh, maybe this is like like a dystopia or something. But then as I got more towards the end, it's like the humans se- seem more and more like. 19th century humans right because there still are humans around right right so then i started thinking oh it's just like an abandoned maybe it's like a mine shaft yeah like abandoned mine shaft or abandoned sewer tunnels or something yeah um anyway so that's so badger has this thing he shows mole around everywhere uh they also have a talk about toad who has (laughs) in the months since we last saw toad he has been acquiring automobiles and then crashing them wait like Actual car? Yes. Are these animals like people size? I have no clue. Later, Toad disguises himself as a human and constantly fools people. He's so gotta be people size. <laughs> or else it's really hilarious to imagine a small toad tricking <laughs> humans. These animals are huge. This has to be a post apocalyptic future. <laughs> They've been uh mutated from <laughs> nuclear power. Um <laughs> Yeah, so Toad <laughs> keeps buying cars with his vast wealth and crashing them immediately. Right. He's on his eighth car, and it's less than a year. Uh, so Badger decides, he's like, okay, when it, when it warms up, we are going to stop, or we're going to have a talk with Toad. We're going to sit him down. <laughs> An intervention. Yeah, basically. And But they don't want to go yet because it's still winter and Badger likes to hibernate. Um, they head back home. Uh, they go on. So then this book has a few chapters that are just complete side stories that barely have anything to do with the narrative. Um, this is one of them. They go to Mole and Rat are walking around outside and it's near Christmas time. And then Mole, like they pass the spot where Mole's house was like under, like it's underground from where they are. Right. And Mole like starts to get like this sudden, like stirring, like he really wants to go home. Like he needs to go home and Rat won't listen to him. Rat's like, no, 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 let's just head back. Like it's cold out. Let's head back. And, uh, so T- Mole goes with him and then starts crying and crying because he wants to go home. Um, so then they go back to Mole's house. Rat takes him. Uh, they get underground and then it's like, you know, Mole's house isn't super nice, especially compared to Rat's. And he starts to feel self-conscious and starts crying again. And then Rat's like trying to make him feel better by being like, no, look, you've got a perfect spread for Christmas. You've got canned anchovies or something like they're going through his food and trying to make a Christmas meal. Some random field mice show up to do some caroling. It's a weird little, like, Christmas side story. It's just, like, it's kind of sweet because Mole is very, like, he's very, um, I don't know what the word is, like, melancholy in this chapter. Okay, yeah. And Rat's, like, trying to comfort him, and I think that's really sweet. Um, then, the next chapter, it is now early summer, and Badger shows up at Rat's house, which is a big deal because Badger never goes visiting. Um. But he's coming for one purpose, and that is to enlist their help in going to talk to Toad. It's time to sit him down to have an intervention for his obsession with cars. Right, right. Uh, So the three of them go to Toad Hall, and Toad is very excited to see them, and Toad wants to... Toad tells them that he has just ordered a brand new red motor car, and he wants them to go riding with him, and they're like, no way. They try to sit him down. Toad (laughs) tries to fight them, but it doesn't work. Uh... They end up locking Toad in his room and telling him he can't leave until his sickness with the cars is overcome. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> they're like, they're working in shifts to monitor Toad. And then one day Badger and Mole are out doing something and it's just Rat and Toad. And uh, Toad starts like sinking into this deep depression and is like, well, you know, I'm probably going to die soon without. Uh, being allowed to leave my house thank you my friends like for taking care of me <laughs> and rat's like oh geez and then uh he's like maybe though maybe you could like send for a lawyer or send for a doctor i really need to get my affairs in order this could be it for old toad and rat starts to get really worried and without like badger or mole to um like talk to about this yeah he decides it's best that if he goes and gets to the doctor or the lawyer or whatever right and so as soon as rat leaves the house toad starts laughing and is like haha now's my chance he bails out his window, <laughs> goes running into town, sees a car that's parked that doesn't belong to him, but belongs to somebody else. Right, right. But Toad needs to go for a ride in the car. So Toad hops in, steals this person's car, immediately crashes the car because Toad's a bad <laughs> yes, driver. Is, yeah, yeah. And then... It's on brand for Toad. Is arrested and thrown into jail immediately. He has a trial where he's like crying the whole time and people are like, yep. Yeah, 
better send him for like the maximum penalty because he <laughs> blah blah blah. And they like keep making up different things. Like he uh when he stole the car, he cheeked off an officer, and that's worth five years alone, and like they keep adding to his sentence. Yeah. So because of Toad's obsession with cars, he is uh he is locked in jail. <laughs> um <laughs> The next chapter is another side story, which is the weirdest one. Um, Rat and Mole are, like, kind of sad because Toad escaped, and I don't think they know what happened to him right away. Right. Um, but they decide to go back to Rat's house because now they don't have to watch Toad anymore. Um, and then the otter is looking for them. The otter is, like, kind of anxious because one of his kids went missing. Right. So they decide to go down the river in their boat and look for Otter's child. and somehow. They come across the god Pan, okay. who is just sitting in a little meadow playing his flute. Okay. And it's not explicitly stated that it's Pan. It actually sounds more like Lucifer when they first find him. Oh, okay. It's like this goat-horned devil playing a flute. Well, a Pan, well, Pan is like a satyr, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So they, they have horns and when moves. When I looked it up, like, when the first description was just like, oh, you, like, goat horns, uh, <laughs> they, they a seductive thing. I was like... <laughs> Does this book take a really dark turn? <laughs> um, but then I was like, oh, okay, it's Pan. Right. And Pan's found the child, and he's keeping the child safe and, and like, leading the rescuers to find the child. Right. And, but it's, and then they don't remember it, and it's a weird dream. And, but in the end, they get the kid home to Otter. And it's such a weird aside from everything that's been going on. Yeah. Um, I'll get into my thoughts on these asides at the end. <laughs> but next, we go back to Toad. Who is in prison and he's very sad and he doesn't eat anything. And the guard keeps like hinting because Toad's very rich. Yeah. And the guard, who oh, I think the guards are human. I think this is a human prison that have been captured Toad. Yeah. They keep hinting that, you know, if you spent some money, you could get more comforts in jail. Like, hint, hint, give me a bribe. Right, right. Um, but Toad is too depressed to listen and is just like sitting in his room crying. Yep. Eventually, the jailer's daughter, who is like a, um, like, like, I think she's, like, a soft-hearted, like, liberal-type character. Right. She finds out about this poor Toad suffering, and she wants to comfort him, and they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, so she goes in there, and she gives Toad some food, and then when Toad gets some food, he starts, like, cheering up. And then, as he starts to gain more energy, he starts to gain more, like, become crafty again. <laughs> right. And so, him and the jailer's daughter come up with this plan to help Toad escape by dressing up as a washerwoman. Okay. Um. Toad is going to leave some money for the washerwoman and she's going to leave her extra uniform for him. And then she's, then he's going to tie her up and leave her in the room so that they think that like Toad was like, um, like basically like stole her clothing, tied her up and escaped. But really like Toad, so she wants to go through this plan so that they don't fire her or accuse her of helping the escape. Right. And he wants to go through this plan because he thinks it'll give him a pretty cool reputation around town. Right. The dangerous Mr. Toad. <laughs> um, so so that's what happens. Uh, Toad is like thinking, oh, why would anyone mistake me, the handsome, gallant Mr. Toad, for a washerwoman? But everyone immediately thinks he's a washerwoman. There's no question. Like, right. They like hype it up so much as like, oh, how will I ever get around these people? Every single person believes he's a washerwoman, <laughs> like without question. Um, so he Toad has Toad like gets out. Apparently, all the men in the prison are like sexually harassing him as he walks past because he's dressed as a washerwoman, right? And he's like going through the like, well, I need to be, I need to like fend them off so that they know I'm a woman of honor, but I can't be too rude or else they'll suspect something. And he's going through like this like list of like social demands on a woman in the 1900s uh, mixed with the, but I'm a toad trying to escape prison. <laughs> it's really, it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Toad is just a very fun character in general. Um, he escapes from prison. He manages to make it to the train. And when he gets to the train, he reaches into his pocket to find his wallet only to realize he's no longer wearing his suit. He's now wearing a washerwoman's uniform. Right. Uh, and he does not, did not carry his wallet with him. Right. So he has no money. Right. He left all his money behind. Um, so he doesn't know what to do. He's like crying. He thinks he's going to get caught. Uh, and then the train like conductor is like, oh, don't cry, washerwoman. Like, if you need a ride home, I can give you a ride home. <laughs> so then 
Toad gets very lucky at his escape. It's very funny. Uh, Toad hops aboard the train. Um, the police start chasing them, and the trainman doesn't want to slow down because uh, that's his route, and he doesn't let people boss him around or something like that. It's right, like right. it's very kind of whatever. And then eventually, Toad reveals himself to be a Toad, and then the train conductor is like, "Well, I don't want to like sell you out or whatever." But they're going to catch up to this train. Our train's not as fast as their car or their train or whatever they had. And then, so he's like, that's fine. Um, if you could just, like, they're going through a tunnel. He's like, if you could just, like, slow down right outside the tunnel so I could, like, jump off and run away. And so that's the plan. Toad ends up jumping off the train, running down towards the riverbank, and that's where he hides for the night. Um, the next chapter is, again, another weird side story where... Rat is feeling restless and he's getting mad at all the other animals who are like, um, I guess it's like the next fall maybe and animals or no, it's the, it's the end of the next summer. So the animals are like, some of them are like planning their like migration South and, um, some of them are like preparing their like winter homes and rats getting like kind of like upset because he's like, look, it's still the summer. You guys should be having fun. They're like, Oh no, we're having fun, but we're also having fun planning. (laughs) and so rat's like taking it weirdly personal because he doesn't migrate and all this stuff and then he runs into a sea rat which is like rides the ships and stuff right and uh the sea rat talks about how great it is to travel the world and rat starts to get kind of like oh yeah this is a good idea and he starts to feel that like stirring that mole felt so then he starts going home packing up his stuff mole comes home and finds him and then eventually convinces the rat to stay at home it's a it's another weird like it's a very like themey chapter it could probably if it wasn't if they weren't animals it could be like a short story on its own right but yeah that's a that's kind of a weird aside <laughs> then we go back to toad <laughs> toad <laughs> toad's plan he sees he doesn't know where to go but he thinks if he follows the like canal or creek or whatever he's beside it'll lead to the river. And once he's at the river, then he can follow the river to Toad Hall. So he's walking along this little, like, body water when a barge passes and there's a... It's like one of those old-timey ships that had, like, like river boats that had, like, a, a lead attached to a horse that was walking beside the river and it, like, would drag the boat along. Um, I think I've seen them in some kind of, like, old-timey movie or... Like, maybe the old, like, the old, old Mickey Mouse cartoons, I think, had one of those. Um, anyway, so that's what it is. And it's on board as this barge woman. And then she sees Toad dressed as the washerwoman. And she thinks, oh, I should invite this woman aboard my ship. Because it looks like we're going the same way. Something like that. Uh, so Toad gets on dressed as a washerwoman. Um, this random barge woman starts grilling Toad about, uh, oh, so you're a washerwoman, blah, blah, blah. And Toad's plan is to pretend that he loves washing so much like it's not even a job for him he just loves it and she's like oh really and he doesn't see it backfiring at all but like immediately the reader is like yeah she's gonna make him wash something <laughs> yeah so then she's like well you know i have all this washing that needs done and i barely have time when i'm trying to keep the barge like following the river or whatever and then toad's like oh no well why don't i steer the barge and you go wash the clothes and she's <laughs> like no if you love washing clothes so much go wash so then Toad, like, so eventually they argue for so long. Right. And then finally Toad's like, all right, I'll go wash your clothes. Um, and he has no idea what he's doing. So he's just like throwing them in a bucket with water and like banging them around. And like he's <laughs> pouring soap in and then banging them around some more. Right. And then it says after like half an hour, she's like, yeah, you really have never washed clothes in your life, have you? <laughs> and, uh, oh, what is it? Something happens and then Toad gets kicked off the boat and he falls in the water. And she's laughing at this washerwoman who can't wash and is now floating in the river so toad decides he needs to get some revenge but instead of like insulting this woman he was going to run up and steal her horse (laughs) so toad steals the horse that's been dragging this boat along the river uh he cuts the line and then rides off um leaving this woman totally stranded in the middle of the river because does this horse talk no this horse is a horse it's it's an actual horse yes (laughs) okay i remember wondering about that too (laughs) if the horse was going to be a new character or if it was a ride (laughs) Uh, and it was just it a is a vehicle. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> they rode the horse to a, um, a Romani or like a traveling like gypsy camp, 
Um, they they just call it gypsy camp, but I know that's like yeah, you, you kind can't of say offensive that anymore, or something. Yeah. So, um, to a traveling camp or whatever, uh, and they meet this guy who's got this delicious smelling breakfast cooking, and Toad is like trying to hatch up a scheme for how he can steal breakfast. But as he rides up, the guy's like, "Hey, that's a nice horse you got there. How much you want to sell it for?" And then Toad like, "Oh, it's so funny. This chapter's hilarious because it's like the guy's like, I'll give you six shillings," and Toad's like, "That's an insult. A spit in my face," and. He, like, talks the guy up until the guy, like, sells it for, like, twice the price and for as much stew as Toad can eat. <laughs> that was the arrangement. So Toad sells his horse, eats a bunch of food, and then sets off again towards town. While on his way to town, a car drives past, and they stop to pick up this poor washerwoman walking alone in the woods. The car happens to be owned by the same people he stole the car from last time who are at the court scene. They don't recognize him. They think he's a washerwoman. So while he's riding, Toad says, would it be okay if I rode in the front seat so I could get more fresh air as I'm feeling quite ill from all this walking in the woods? And they're like, oh, excellent woman. Smart idea. Brilliant woman. <laughs> so they put her in the front. And then Toad's like, hmm, would, would you ask the driver if I could maybe take a turn driving the car? Oh, no. I've never driven before. Right. And they're like, like, oh, excellent. This it'll be this washerwoman's first time driving a car. Um, <laughs> so Toad starts driving. Then he starts first. He's being very careful because he doesn't want to be discovered. But then the like call of the road comes back to him. And he starts <laughs> driving faster, and then they're telling him to slow down. And like washerwoman, you're mad. And then he rips off his costume and says, "I am no washerwoman. I am the mighty Toad." <laughs> I don't know if that was his exact line, but it's very close. Oh, I actually you sent me that quote. Uh, you sent it to me in a text message, and I have it pulled up right now. Oh, perfect. You want me to read it? Um, yes. <laughs> the driver tried to interfere, but he pinned him down in his seat with one elbow and put it on full speed. The rush of air in his face, the hum of the engines, and the light jump of the car beneath him intoxicated his weak brain. <laughs> Washerwoman indeed, he shouted recklessly. Ho ho! I am the toad! The motor car snatcher! The prison breaker! The toad who always escapes! Sit still, and you shall know what driving really is, for you are in the hands of the famous, the skillful, the entirely fearless Toad. Um, I love him so much. <laughs> he's so conceited, and he's so, like, grandiose about it. It's wonderful. <laughs> Before he got picked up, when he was walking along the road, mm -hmm. he was writing a song about his great encouragements. You also sent me yeah, that. <laughs> I was going to read that one. All right, go it for says, it. The world has held great heroes, as history books have showed, but never a name to go down to fame compared with that of Toad. The clever men at Oxford know all there is to be known, but they, none of them, know one half as much as intelligent Mr. Toad. The animals sat in the ark and cried. Their tears and torrents flowed. Who was it said, there's land ahead, encouraging Mr. Toad. The army all saluted as they marched along the road. Was it the king or Kitchener? No, it was Mr. Toad. <laughs> and he goes on for a bit. And then, uh, so anyway, as he's in the car, he yells us out. They're trying to wrestle him from him. They're also, once he reveals himself as Toad, they decide to try to grab him so they can arrest him again. <laughs> and he decides to drive the car straight into a pond and then escape, which, you know, it works. It, he <laughs> pulls it off. And then as he's walking away from the the car that's sunk in the pond and these people are trying to like get out and trying to like get their car out toad like merrily skips off and then starts singing another song about how great he is um i think i have that screenshot too all right oh yeah this is the motor car went poop 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 one the code of yeah the motor car went poop poop poop. okay um so <laughs> so this is after he escapes he goes uh he began to giggle, and from giggling he took to laughing, and he laughed till he had to sit down under a hedge. Ho ho, he cried, in ecstasies of self-admiration. Toad again. Toad, as usual, comes out on the top. Who was it got them to give him a lift? Who managed to get on the front seat for the sake of fresh air? Who persuaded them into letting him see if he could drive? Who landed them all in a horse pond? Who escaped, flying gaily and unscathed through the air, leaving the narrow-minded, grudging timid excursionists in the mud where they should rightly be why toad of course clever toad great toad good toad then he burst into song again and chanted with uplifted voice the motor car went poop 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 as it raced along the road who was it that steered it into a pond ingenious mr toad <laughs> <laughs> he's just congratulating himself nonstop yeah, for wrecking this car <laughs> the brave and wise toad who crashed a car and then ran away 
Motor um, car goes poop, poop, poop. <laughs> so yeah, so he's uh, he's he's so happy with himself. Um, he somehow manages to get down to the river again, mm-hmm. uh, and then he starts to hear police sirens. I think, and so he dives into the river trying to escape, but he's forgetting that he's wearing like the washerwoman's clothes. And as they fill up with water, they start to, like, drag him under. Right. And so he's basically sort of half drowning in this river as the current carries him along. Right. Uh, then the next... Sorry, I'm pulling up the summary again to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, no. Eventually, Toad kind of swims down the river, and then he sees a familiar face. He wound up at uh, the Water Rat's house. So he goes inside. Um, Rat is, like, not super happy to see Toad. <laughs> <laughs> um i think kind of he's mad that toad tricked him before but also like toad's reputation is now being like a car thief and a guy who ties up washer women and who steals cars or no and who escapes from prison is like it's not a very it's a very unseemly reputation to have around the animal woods right uh so and then too toad is like very still high on his self-confidence and he goes in like bragging super hard. And Rat's like, why would you brag about those things? You stole a car, you stole a horse, you drove a car into a pond. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and then Toad is like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rat. Um, Mole comes home and Mole's very excited to see Toad. Uh, and Mole's like encouraging him to tell his stories. But then Rat's like, don't encourage him. Don't get him started again. Uh, Badger comes home and he's very unhappy with Toad. Uh, Badger and Mole had just been out spying on toad hall which has been taken over by all the weasels and ferrets and stoats from the forest right uh so they're now camped up in toad hall toad has decided to take home his ancestral or take back his ancestral home uh so he heads back to toad hall where a stoat like they have stoats are guarding the walls i don't exactly know what a stoat is i think it's like a weasel but some kind of creature named a stoat uh, fires a gun at Toad, and Toad ducks underneath and then runs away. Um, Toad then decides to take Rat's boat and come up through the river and see if he can get to his hall from the other side. Um, but as he's riding along, a couple of weasels drop a giant rock from above him, which sinks the boat. Mm. Um, and the whole time they're mocking Toad, too. And they're singing, like, Toad songs, but they're songs mocking Toad, which is very fun. Um, so it's like he's got this reputation across the land as being this outrageous character. Um, he comes home, they're like, Rat and Mole and Badger all, like, have a stern talking to with Toad, which, I get they're the serious characters of the book, but when you harsh the, the fun character's vibe, like, that always bugs me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, they hatch up a scheme to sneak in through Badger's underground tunnels to the basement of Toad Manor and, uh, or Toad Hall, and then kick out all the ferrets and weasels. Um, they found out, thanks to Otter, who has also disguised himself as a washerwoman and gone to the Toad Hall, uh, they've discovered that. <laughs> I just realized how common of a theme that is in the end of this book. Uh, Otter has figured out that the weasels are having a giant party that the next night, and that they're going to go in during the party because they won't have any of their weapons with them. Like, the weasels all have, like, knives and guns and stuff. But if they go in during the party, they'll all be unarmed. That's their plan anyway. Um, then Toad comes back, or not Toad, sorry, Mole comes back. Mole borrowed Toad's washerwoman costume, and he went up to the manor dressed as a washerwoman. Everybody's just... (laughs) Yeah, everyone, everyone is being mistaken as washerwomen, and it's so funny to me that it's like (laughs) Toad, Mole, and Otter all pass as a human washerwoman if they just put on the right costume. Um... Anyway, Mole goes up, and he starts telling the stoats who are guarding the wall that, oh, you better watch out, Mr. Toad is out, and uh, he's rallied together an army of fearless toads called the the Diehards or Death or Glory Toads or something like that. And then a hundred armed badgers are coming to support Badger, and um, you better watch out because there's also a secret team of, like, Navy water rats coming in, and uh, he, like, just really overhypes this whole attack that's about to happen Mm -hmm. and toad gets so mad because he thinks that mole has like betrayed their plans but then badger's like oh mole you genius like you've probably saved us a fight like now we can really go in undefended or like the house will be undefended when we go in 
And then Mole gets even more mad. Or I'm sorry, Toad gets even more mad because Mole's getting all the praise and he's not. <laughs> so together they go. So Rat gathers a bunch of weapons for them. They arm themselves to the teeth and then they sneak in through the basement. The last chapter is called like Ulysses Returns Home or something, <laughs> which is a pretty sweet call out to uh, the Odyssey. Um, so they're all heading home or to Toad's house. They break in through the basement. Um, <laughs> they're waiting for their attack. And then the chief, uh, the chief weasel, who's like the party is in honor of him. He's like, he starts singing a song about how bad Toad is <laughs> and Toad can't resist. He rushes into the room and starts beating them all up with a stick. And uh, Badger and them, they all follow. They're all beating up the to- the weasels and the rats, or the weasels and the um, ferrets and stuff like that. Um, as the weasels are fleeing, talking about a badger and a rat and a toad, the stoats hear them and think the attack is now, so then they all start fleeing too. Um, they end up like basically taking back the mansion, no problem. Um, the next day, oh, Badger's praising Mole and Rat but doesn't say anything about Toad, and Toad gets mad about this. Um, The next day, they decide to have a banquet to celebrate Toad getting his home back. Uh, And while it's a nice day out, and Toad wants to strut around his mansion, like, grounds, and, like, basically just, you know, enjoy the fact that he's the king of his own castle once again. He's no longer on the run. Yeah. Um, Badger says, no, you have to stay home and make all the invites for this banquet. And at first, Toad is arguing with him. And then as he's arguing, he changes his mind mid-argument. So then that's why I'm going to stay home and I'm going to do all these invitations. <laughs> and they're all immediately suspicious. And uh, <laughs> the invitations he prepares are uh, banquet at Toad Hall, um, speech by Toad, address by Toad, uh, song composed by Toad, performed by the composer. <laughs> like a long list of all these things that Toad plans to do when the people come. Yeah. Um, and then somehow Badger gets a hold of the invitations. He makes Mole write new ones, and he uh, they have another intervention with Toad to be like, "You've got to stop being such a braggart. Like, <laughs> you've got a very bad reputation on these parks. You have to start acting respectable." Um, and then the ending is kind of weird because Toad is kind of sad. He acts respectable, but like in a way that it's like his soul's been crushed. Right. Um. And then that's the banquet. And then afterwards, it's like, um, it does like a brief thing afterwards of what happens with all the characters. Basically, they're now all very respected in the wild woods. And like, the ferrets and weasels tell stories about these great fighters. And so when they walk through the woods, they're all like, well respected. The badger is held as like this boogeyman um, who is able to beat up all the f- ferrets and weasels. And then but Badger thinks it's unfair because he really likes children. So now the children <laughs> will talk to him. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of like, that's the end. Huh. Toad has his house back, but he's kind of sad. He doesn't get to be a braggart anymore. Um, overall, I enjoyed it. Uh, it is a kid's book, but it's like an old timey kid's book. So it's not necessarily an easy read, but it's not super hard either. Um, the side stories feel very boring compared to the main stories because they don't have toad in them um i can't i feel like i've exaggerated this a lot but or not exaggerated but emphasized a lot how great toad is as a character (laughs) but i don't even know if i've done it enough justice like toad is so funny Mm -hmm. like he's constantly like getting into these little messes and he's like he's really dumb but he's overconfident about it Mm -hmm. which is automatically kind of funny um he is extremely confident even though he's getting just either super lucky or like getting caught like there's no like he's never getting through because he's clever it's always like he's either just lucky or uh something else happens to get him through it's just so funny right um i like all the songs that he writes about himself (laughs) um the way that he keeps crashing cars and thinking he needs a new one immediately Mm -hmm. is very funny to me um yeah, I uh, I rated this a four stars on Goodreads. Okay. Um, where it's like the Toad chapters are five out of five, but the non-Toad chapters are like a three out of five, so they kind of balance out. So it evens out. itself out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that Mole and Rat aren't fun to read about, mm-hmm. but they're just like, they're kind of normal and they're kind of like, you know, they're a little like over-emotional in a way that can be kind of 
entertaining, but it's also still like, oh, well, Mole's sad, or, oh, Rat wants to go on a journey, <laughs> but it's like, Toad is stealing cars and crashing them into ponds and running away from people while singing about how great he is. Like, <laughs> it's very hard to compare. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, did you have any, like, questions? or? I mean, I'm still hung up on that these are people. Oh, animals. yeah. So that is so confusing. There's no, like... I guess they don't explain that in Redwall either, but Redwall avoids it by not having people show up. Mm-hmm. So it's like the animals are in size compared to each other. You mm-hmm. don't know how big the buildings are compared to the animals. Well, I, I googled it really quick, and I'm looking at a conversation on literaturestackexchange.com. Okay. Where somebody asks, like, how human they're supposed to be. Yeah. And there's apparently supposed to be mostly human looking like they have hair yeah toad does have hair yeah and here's a quote here that is like he he dipped his hairbrush in a water jug parted his hair in the middle and plastered it down very straight and sleek on each side of his face yep that's the end of the book (laughs) which frogs do not have hair (laughs) oh yeah and like they definitely mentions that they're always wearing clothes and they're always like like toad has his like rich outfit and his suit and stuff Mm -hmm. um and, like, they can pass as washerwomen, like, just by wearing her clothes, so they have to be, like, people-shaped. Yeah, but then, like, I kind of wonder, because the, so the people are never, like, I feel like they're never outright described as people. Like, the animals are always like, oh, this is rat, or these are weasels, or mm-hmm. this is toad. Um, But then it'll be like, but the jailer woman, or, like, the jailer's daughter. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't. Those people don't have animal descriptions, but they're not necessarily, they don't get people descriptions either. Mm. So I always wondered, like, I kind of wondered if maybe they're also animals, but they're not, uh, like, if they're just not specified or something. Mm. I don't know. I don't know which world makes sense. <laughs> Giant humanoid animals who, like, sort of live in conjunction with people, mm. or, like, just different animals who aren't uh, fleshed out as animals. Yeah, this this commentary is saying, like, they're mostly human, but, like, superhuman, like, probably less like animals, but, because <laughs> they, they send a, a toad to a human jail, and nobody's like, there's a frog in here, so. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. Anyway, um, yeah, if you have, uh, if you have kids or something, they might enjoy this book. Um. If you've never read it and you're an adult, you might enjoy this book. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, Danny, where can people find us? People can find us on Facebook, Literary AF. You can find us on Twitter, Literary AF Pod. You can listen to us on iTunes, uh, Spotify, Podbean, YouTube, Audible, and something else I think I got an email about recently. I'm not totally sure. I'll have to look it up and I'll post it in the show notes later. Um, on Netflix, we are. We've not been on... given a Netflix series. Nope, nope, not on <laughs> Netflix. Um, and you can send us an email, literaryafpod at gmail.com. Great, and uh, what's next uh, Next part of... I'm still working on Midnight Sun. Midnight Sun. I've, I started a new job like two weeks ago. Yeah. And so I've been doing, like, they assign like two hours of homework every day. I've been doing homework <laughs> instead of doing anything else. And Amazing. Now I have to, like, memorize bus routes and things like that, so... I haven't had a whole lot of reading time. So, hopefully will, we'll have a episode of Twilight sometime I soon. I will try to finish Midnight Sun in the next week or so. <laughs> and then we can do an episode about the finale. Because I do not want to stretch it out any much longer than I already have. I'm yeah. so tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. Uh, <laughs> Alright, well, yeah. So, you can check us out of those places. You can read Midnight Sun if you want to know what we're talking about next episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, hey, you out there. You listening. Remember? Keep reading. <laughs> oh wait, I didn't have my thing. Yeah, I was up. gonna say, did you have an audible or like an audiobook or like some kind of ebook page? <laughs> oh yeah. Like... And it didn't work because my phone was on mute. <laughs> Let me try that one more time. Pucks. <laughs>